Hey, hey, what's up, garden friends? Things are so lush and beautiful today. Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I am great, fantastic. Just got home from a fun day out in the countryside. Drove by the river, it was beautiful. I was surprised to come home to having a package on the front porch, a package from Hertz. I knew the package was coming, it just, it wasn't supposed to be here for a few days. So that was a nice surprise, but it does mean that the plants were sitting in here for, I don't know, maybe a day because I, I was out all day. I had no idea there's a package on the front porch till I woke up the next morning. So that's just the full disclosure. It's always best to get these things opened up as soon as they arrive, right? There aren't a ton of plants in here. There's just a few. The main reason I ordered from Hertz was because, well, they have these little begonias that I showed in a haul not long ago and I wanted to put one in here. So I ordered another one and it just, it seemed wasteful to only order one plant, right? Does that mean? May as well fill up a box if you're going to have someone go through the shipping and you're gonna pay for it, right? That's how I'm justifying all of this. I did already cut it open, as you can see. Cut my address out. The package arrived looking totally fine. A Little bit of dirt in there, some soil spilled, but that's to be expected. Go ahead, pull some plants out, get them cleaned up if necessary, and then we can pot up that little bonsai guy. I'm looking forward to that for a while. Not seeing any kind of invoice in here, so let me go ahead and pull up my order on my phone just to make sure I have the names right on these plants. I will say these shipped out fairly quickly. I placed the order on a Sunday that didn't ship out until that following Thursday, and when they when plants ship out on a Thursday, I'm always like, really? Why? Because they may end up sitting at the post office all weekend, and the tracking said that they probably wouldn't be here till Monday, but the tracking was wrong, and they showed up on Saturday. That's pretty. It's a Tillandsia. I'll get this out. We can see the tag here. Did I not bring a box cutter? Sometimes you just get excited to see the plants and forget about the common sense things. Here we go. Plant looks fine. Kind of dirty. Unfortunately, it looks like it's mostly done blooming. Put up these bracts, pretty red bracts, and then little flowers pop out from the bottom and work their way up to the top and you can see the spent flowers on there. Usually they'll hold on to these colorful bracts for a fairly long time, so I'm not really too bothered by that. This is the Tillandsia Spirit is what it's called. See, it has that nice offshoot right there. That'll grow up, put out more flowers, hopefully within the next year or so. I would imagine it'd be grown this pretty much the same as I would like the Tillandsia Cyanae, the pink quill, beautiful Tillandsias. Pretty fuss free. Should be pretty easy to take care of. Hopefully, because I actually got this to give to someone, so let's hope it's easy to, for them to take care of. Okay, what's next? Oh, the begonia. How about that? The entire reason that I even placed the orders. Packaged well. Looks good. Saran wrap off of here so you can get a better look at it. Looks okay. A little bit beat up. It's the begonia tiny Pink. These begonias, I believe this one only goes about eight inches. I'll pull the tag around so we can see what it says. I can read the tag off if you can't read that. We present the smallest leaf begonia available in shrub form that is tiny enough for our fairies to nap underneath, okay? Oh, right, fairy gardening. That's that's the whole point there, I get it. As long as the swell around the begonia is allowed to dry out, they are perfect specimens for terrariums and small dish gardens. Yeah, so it's nine to 11, down to 20 degrees. I won't be letting it get anywhere near that cool because it's gonna be staying in the house. Bloom spring through fall. They have really cute, tiny little pink flowers. Six inches by six inches. Morning sun, no afternoon sun. Yeah, and it's pretty, pretty standard begonia care. The tiny pink looks like the one in that picture there. The one that I already have has grown to look sort of like a small tree. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to get this plant to put into that bonsai pot. And they have teeny tiny itty bitty little dainty pink flowers. I really wanted to use a fuchsia, one of the tiny mini fuchsias for this bonsai pot, but the teeny tiny super dwarf fuchsias, they really are not fans of high heat and high humidity. This is gonna be cute. This is gonna be really cute. Comment down below, can you already guess what it is? You can probably tell. It's a little bitty baby pineapple. Bananas Camosa Nana, maybe? I don't know, let's see if there's a tag in here. Whole bunch of offshoots, and that's good because once the pineapple's done, then that mother plant that's in the middle That'll start to die off, and then hopefully within the next one to probably three years, those offshoots should put up little pineapples as well. All right, no tag. The description just says pineapple plant, Ananas camosus. So stinking cute and tiny. I love tiny little pineapples. They just have such a fun shape. They're adorable and delicious. Not that I'm gonna eat this, I'm just mean. Pineapples in general. Love them. It's fun plants and pretty easy to grow too. Sometimes getting them to actually flower and then fruit 
can be complicated, but as far as just keeping the plant itself alive, I think they're one of the easier bromeliads. They like a lot of light. You don't have to keep them saturated all of the time. In fact, they usually prefer to not be saturated and sopping wet. That's particularly true if they're indoors and it's really warm, then they don't, they don't want to be sopping wet all the time. Outdoors, as long as things are nice and toasty and the soil drains well, pretty easy and forgiving plants. And lastly, I have two of these. I'm gonna open up both of them. We can look at them at the same time. A little dirty. It's like a whole bunch of soil managed to escape the pot in this one. Ooh, this is looking pretty good though. All right, need to get the other one opened up. Okay, all right. I think a damp paper towel inside of these probably would have been helpful. There's soil coming out all over the place from these pots. I got the last two plants unwrapped and then I was going to get them cleaned up and everything and realize, well, that doesn't make sense. It's an unboxing video. Y'all want to see them right when they come out of the box and what they look like after shipping. So here we are. I love when you do something, you think it's going to be beautiful on camera and then it's like, nah, I'm not going to focus on that. But here are a couple of silver dragon alocasia. Pretty common as far as the dragon type alocasias are concerned fairly simple to grow in comparison to some of the others. I was hopeful these would be a decent size and for their price, they're right about what I would have hoped for. And here's the thing though, the packaging, they really should have put something along the top of the soil because a lot of that came popping out of the pots, like a lot. They need to be repotted anyways. They're right at that size where they should go up into something larger, but I mean, there's a lot of soil missing out of these. You can see this entire plant isn't even centered up how it should be. And they're both leaning. That's probably just from being in a box for like two and a half days. That's not the end of the world. These can rot out fairly easily. So want to make sure that that soil does drain sharply. I like it to be organically rich. I'm not going to talk too much about care when it comes to these plants because one, I feel like everybody has a video on how to care for the different dragons. And uh, the way you grow them varies so differently by your climate, by where you live. So for someone like me, where I have them outside for part of the year, and I live someplace where it's warm and humid with plenty of precipitation during the growing season, and then I bring them inside during the winter time, and you know, I have a grow space set up with a massive fogger and all of these things, it's not really applicable to how a lot of people are going to be growing them, but I guess in my region, a lot of people would be growing them this way. It's just so different from if you're growing them inside year round, you don't have the warm temperatures to take them out to during the warmer part of the year. But the basics, bright and direct light, I don't usually let them dry out more than maybe an inch into the soil, if even. But again, that's gonna depend on your climate. It's one of those things where you have to learn the dance and the rhythm with your plant. When you start to see it, those stems start to fall and they start to just come down a little bit, that means that they need water. It's one of those things where you sort of have to find your sweet spot with them. But the Silver Dragon, from my experience, not one of the harder ones to grow. They have beautiful, nice, stiff foliage. It's beautiful, it's gorgeous. These leaves are a little funky looking, but about on par with what I would expect for the size. And these have great offshoots in them. So. Even though a lot of soil came out of these pots, I can't say that they're rooted wonderfully with that in mind, right? See the plant's original plug down in there and it doesn't look like that's decomposing. Sometimes that can be an issue when you're using a soil that doesn't have a lot of organics in it because that's not gonna get broken down as quickly. This is a sterile mix. It looks like cocoa chips and sand and cocoa core fibers. But it has multiple tubers starting to shoot out. These will put up lots of little plantlets they're not a plant that's too difficult to propagate. And I need to get these watered immediately, but I wanted to make sure to show them to the camera how they actually came out of the box, which is fairly dirty and kind of wonky. <laughs> you can see how they were sitting in the package. They'll be just fine though. I am going to give them a drink, let them rehydrate. And in the next few days, I'll go ahead and get them repotted, but I want to give them a chance to get hydrated and bounce back. No, nope. there's no sense in repotting a plant that's dehydrated, right? Especially a plant that tends to throw a fit anyways when they get repotted. Looking forward to seeing these grow. What are some of your favorite types of the dragon type? Do you have any favorites? The cuprias, I think, are amazing. I love the cupria. And the silver dragon is probably also my favorite. So it's from very common to like crazy and exotic. Beautiful, stiff, healthy foliage. They have a hard cuticle on the leaves. They're nice and sturdy, particularly for if you live someplace like I do, where they may be prone to some hail, although these will be in a spot where they're sheltered. They're not going to have direct light on them, so hopefully that won't ever be an issue. But if it is, I'm not too worried about these leaves getting torn up by any inclement weather. They may get broken or snapped off, but 
won't have holes in them. They're fun and beautiful plants. I know I had said originally that it would be fun to get that begonia potted up, but the more I look at it, I'm kind of wondering if I should maybe give that a day or two, give it some time to, oh, excuse you, where are you going? Come back here. It might not be a bad idea to give this at least a few days to recover. But the thing is with plants and shipping, generally you're looking at at least two weeks to a month for full recovery. So that's where I'm on the fence. Do I go ahead and repot this? Because potting this up into that bonsai container, you have to really tease the roots out to get them into that pot. And it already seems kind of sad, but since it already seems kind of sad, so just go for it. I love it. Have you ever had something where you're like, I just need to get this out of my system? I've wanted to do something like this for a very long time. And I would still call this a rough draft because there's no false bottom or anything in there like that. And that's partially because this dish is slightly too large for this. So if I put a false bottom in here, then it would be difficult to pull that bell up and down. Just grabbed the moss from the garden, gave it a very gentle rinse with some filtered water just to help get any debris, any nasties out of there. and went ahead and threw it right on top of the glass. So we'll see how well that does. Like I said, I think that there should be something underneath it, but this will hold on to moisture pretty well, or very well, really, because there's no holes in here. I'm gonna take the bell off, just so can you have a better look at what's inside there. I'm gonna be keeping this indoors. I wouldn't have this under glass outside that would just cook the entire thing. The begonia, I did make one cut up here at the top because there is a branch that's coming and curling around. This right here is the main growth I want to focus on. I want to let that branch out and form into a small tree and keep it fairly cleared out down below so don't end up hiding the figure below it. I may go ahead and prune off these two little shoots that are on the side too. I'm going to wait until I make that decision because there are some things that I may want to do to change this up. I may even put this in a wider enclosure that has more of a bottom to it so that I can't have that proper false bottom in here. Or if I get attached to it looking like this, then I'll just say forget it and replace the moss with fake moss if this doesn't want to keep living. That would be fine too. This is my main focus right here. It's going to be so pretty when it gets some more branching on it. It'll have a fun ethereal look to it and then it has those little pink dangly flowers. It's just very serene and pretty. I do have some pieces of stone that I think would have been lovely in here too, but they're just really wasn't room to work these in without blocking the figure, the pot, and that would have that would have defeated the purpose, right? Okay, so there's that. A very sharp deviation from the rest of the video, which was a plant unboxing. Love how it looks and love how it turned out. Oh, and I did, I cleaned this and the bell very thoroughly beforehand. But in the shot where I set it down, it may have looked muddy. That's because I, I had put this entire thing together and the camera wasn't recording. So I started over, so it was muddy by the time I redid that. That's all right. Not a big deal at all. The uh, silver dragons back here, I went ahead and uh, topped them off with some fresh soil and it gave them a very, a very thorough watering. I think there's even still a little bit of water coming out the bottoms. They're very, very, very thirsty, and I corrected the lean on the one. But these should stand back up and start looking a lot better here not too long, because that's, that's wonky. I'm not crazy about that. I'm not concerned about this being an issue of dehydration because the stem is still very, very firm in here. 
these don't feel dehydrated like they were very close to it that potting media was very dry but since they're both consistently curved at the same spot from where they were laying inside the cardboard box i think that was just them correcting themselves that's an easy enough fix just have to make sure that they're set in the right spot and that they will get the proper light i'll hold off until this weekend's vlog to make my decision about what i'm going to do with these side shoots i do think it would look a lot better to go ahead and cut those off though what do you think comment down below say hi tips tricks suggestions always appreciates how we all learn together let me know what you think with the pruning on this see that it's just it's wonky if i want to maintain that tree form i think it'd be best to go with leaving that piece right there i hope everybody's doing well having a great day and a great life and everything's just going beautifully for you and of course as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.